the Campbell Playhouse. Orson Welles, producer. Good evening. This is Orson Welles. Our broadcast tonight is The Garden of Allah. Few items of entertainment, novel, play, or motion picture, The Garden of Allah has been all three, have stood up under the test of public approval so well and so long. We regret that Claudette Colbert could not be with us. But we regard ourselves as very fortunate in having tonight for the role of Domini a very lovely lady who has been with us before and whom you have recently had a chance to admire in that delightful and highly successful picture, Honeymoon in Bali, Miss Madeline Carroll. And now, The Garden of Allah, with Orson Welles and tonight's Playhouse guest, Miss Madeline Carroll. It is the greatest love, the love of God. This knowledge comes to all. I myself have had it since my first breath. I, Father Rubier, and that is why I've been happy to serve God as his priest in all my days here in Benimora, at the very edge of the great Sahara Desert. This is the story of Domini, who came here in search of peace, and found it, and of Boris, who finally regained here what he had almost forever lost. It would be untrue to say that when I first laid eyes on those two, Domini and Boris, I had even the faintest idea of what was to come. I first saw them on the very day of their arrival among us at the Hotel du Désert. She was by herself at one of the tables, he was alone at another. She returned my greeting as I passed in a direct and friendly fashion. She had a strange, unusual beauty through which I could sense, even in that first moment, the sincerity and earnestness whose enormous depth I was to learn in the days to come. I did not see his face. He did not look up, and I did not repeat my greeting. It is one of the early lessons we learn on the desert that each one has a right to his own concerns, to live out his life in the behavior of a king's best friend. That afternoon later, I saw her again. Good afternoon, Father. Can I help you, my daughter? Thank you. I'd like to sit here for a moment, Father. You are a Catholic? Yes. If there is anything I can do for you while you are here? There will be, I know, but for a few days I intend simply to rest. Ah, that is wise. It is a long journey here from... Uh... England. You are alone here? Yes, Father. There is someone else here who is also alone. Yes. I... He came in the same train with me. You don't know him? No. No, we traveled in the same compartment all day, and yet... Oh, perhaps I'm making a lot of nothing. It was a feeling he gave me rather than what he did. What was it that he did? Oh, nothing really, I suppose. And yet, as I was getting on the train, he was standing in the doorway of the carriage. He paid no more attention when I tried to get past him than if I had not existed at all. He simply stood there and blocked my way. He almost made me miss the train. And then all the way to Benny Mora, he never said a word. He just turned his head away whenever I happened to look at him. It was as if he didn't want me... To, as if he didn't want anybody to be with him, to be near him, to make it necessary for him to know that there were other people. That is not uncommon in this part of the world. Perhaps he has something to hide. He has, Father. I could tell that. Sitting there in that railway carriage, he looked like a criminal, bracing himself to escape detection. He was afraid, I almost thought, of himself. That, too, is not unusual. We have many here who try to hide from others, my child. Just as many who try to hide from themselves. I think I know myself what it is to suffer. But I have never seen such a tortured face as his. Peace will come to him, my child. As it does to all in this desert. I like to pretend to myself 
that I have within me. No envy of anyone or anything. But I have known for years that this is not so. When I think of Count Antione's desert garden, I have always a small pang of envy of the people whom I sent to see it. Nowhere else in the world is there such beauty. Since I have been in Benimora, I've been there, what, a thousand times? Five thousand times. And yet, one can only see it for the first time once. The Domini saw it that day. It was good of you, madame, to come to see my garden. Uh, it was Father Rudy who told me about them, and about you, Count Antioni. Yes, the father and I are old friends. Our beliefs are not the same, but he has done much good here among these people. Come, madame. Now I will show you our desert under the sun. You must see it also by night, by moonlight. Tonight I will send a guide for you. He will take you up to the tower. After that, you must send him away. To see the desert at night, one must be alone. Oh, it's almost too much beauty. This is my first visit to Africa. I don't know if you can imagine what I think of your garden. What I feel in it. What? Do you feel in it, madame? May I tell you something, Count Antione? Please, madame. My father died a year ago in London of a broken heart. He had been a man of devout faith until some years before, until my mother suddenly left him for a reason that nobody was ever able to discover. A month later, she killed herself. From that moment on, he lost all his religion. He tried to make me lose mine. Since his death, I have been neither with nor without belief without the consolation of faith, without the strength of disbelief. I came here to the desert to... to renew my heart, to find myself. I came here to find peace. There is peace here. The desert, all peace. Peace. When I'm in Benimora, I usually come here, where I can see the desert. The Arabs have... The desert... Is the garden of Allah. The garden of Allah. Who is that man? The diviner of the sand. He wants to divine your future for you. My future? The sand tells him secrets. Yeah. Would you like to test him? Yeah. I'm not sure. I... Mind, I do not yeah. press it if you are afraid. What is he doing now? Speaking with his ancestor. His ancestor? The sands. Can you understand what he says? The light of Madame. I see it in the sand. The life of Madame in the Grand Desert of Sahara. Oh, please, please, go on. Translate it for me. Exactly as it is? Exactly as it is. Whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. Whatever it is, you shall know it. He's speaking about the desert. You see, a great storm. Everything is blotted out. The desert vanishes. It is day, yet there is darkness like night. There is a train of camels waiting by a church. A mosque? No, a church. In the church, there is the sound of music. The roar of the wind mingles with the chanting and drowns it. He cannot hear anymore. It is as if the desert is angry and wishes to kill the music. In the church, your life is beginning. My life? Beginning? He sees the train of camels that waited by the church start on a desert journey. The storm has not abated. He sees them going toward the south. By what route? A long road, a great road to the south. On one of the camels, there are two people protected against the storm by curtains. They are silent. One of them is you. And the other? Manitani. He cannot see. The caravan passes and is lost in the desolation and the storm. Now you are far away in the desert. Among the dunes, there is a tent. My tent? Yes, it is night and you are quite alone. But you cannot sleep. You go out of the tent upon the dunes. The jackals are howling all around you and the skeletons of dead camels are white under the moon and a figure among the dunes is coming toward you. Who is it? Who is it? 
Gregory. Watch this figure. Flora, ja, was able it comes to you walking heavily. Flora. The dates shrivel on the palms. The strings Flora. dry up. The flowers Flora. drop and die Flora. in the sands. The red fires Flora. fade away. All is dark Flora. and silent. And now he sees. Wait, wait. He sees. I don't want to hear anymore. You anymore. said whatever it may be. I don't want to hear anymore. He sees it plainly. Just because you don't want to listen. No, no, I don't. I don't want to Stop it. Stop it. Please stop it. Madame. A gleam of light there to the west is the moon, madame. It's shining on the mosque of Sidi Zazur. Beyond that are the roofs of the greatest caravans going south to Damakou. And there, madame, to the east is the great desert that has no end. And there to the north, madame, are the mountains. And beyond on the sea, where are the great ships that will take you home. I feel as if I had never been home until today. What did madame say? Leave me now. Wait for me downstairs. There is someone else on the parapet. A man, madame. Where? Oh. Looks like the stranger, madame. The one from the hotel. Go down, Batouche. If I want you, I will call. Yes, madame. Have you been here before? It's wonderful here, isn't it? Very wonderful, madame. We seem to be the only travelers here. Yes, madame. There are not many here. Madame. Yes? I have... I have something to say to you. Not much. Yet it is much to me. It is this... Pardon me, madame, for yesterday my silence in the carriage. I did not mean to be rude. I was unknowing. Unknowing? Unknowing, that's all I can say. But it is the truth. I simply do not know. I... I have forgotten... How? You must forgive me, madame. I do forgive you. Don't think of it anymore. Thank you. Those Arabs down there, they look almost like one of our own religious orders when they wear their hoods. One forgets their religion. All men are alike, with or without their hoods. With or without their religions. Oh, I do not believe that, monsieur. But I, I know that, madame. Each one of us has his happiness to find. With or without what other people need for theirs. That should be easy in the desert, then. One ought to find happiness here. Why? Why should you suppose so? Oh, it's so beautiful and so calm. Calm? Where? In the depths of the desert, there must be peace. Far away. Far away from modern men and modern women. Far away from all the things to which we are accustomed. And in which there is no peace. You think it lies out there? Far away in the desert? I think it must. The very face of nature. There is peace. I will go down now, madame. You wish to be alone, I know. And I'm still ashamed. Of what? Of my conduct, of my awkwardness. And I'm with you. I, I'm not accustomed to the society of women. Anything I've done to displease you. Oh, I have already forgotten. Thank you. Good night. Good night. You will shake hands with me? Of course. My name is Dominique and Sheldon. I don't think you told me your name. I, too, am partly English, madame. My father was a Russian, but my mother was English like you. My name is Boris. Boris Androvsky. I've learned much from you in these few moments. From me? You will never know how much. Good night. village like Benimora, there are no secrets. In the days that followed, it was known that Domini and the stranger were spending much of their time together. Long rides in the desert to a neighboring oasis. Peaceful walks together in the cool of the desert night. Often I saw them together on the street, his tall, dark figure beside her slender beauty. Almost it seemed to me that he was avoiding me until we met one day at Count Antione's. We had never spoken until that day. The 
It was also on that day that I received a letter from a young French officer named de Trevignac, whose father I had known. If only I could have foreseen that the things he told me in that letter, things seemingly so far removed from the lives of Dominique and Boris, were someday to decide their destinies. In the letter, Lieutenant de Trevignac informed me with understandable anger of a regrettable occurrence at the monastery of El Laraguin in Tunisia, which he had just visited. A Trappist monk, many years trusted with the secret of the famous Laraguin liqueur, had broken his vows and disappeared. It was an offense that shocked him as it did me. I told you, madame, I do not care for priests. Still, for once, for an hour, you could surely... I prefer not to be with priests. Oh, if I had known Father Rubio was coming, I would have told him. Father Rubio hates me. How can he hate you when he has never seen you before? Madame, forgive me. I've suffered much. I'm suspicious of everybody. Forgive me. You will always suffer if you cannot govern yourself. You will make people dislike you, be suspicious of you. Suspicious? Who's suspicious of me? Who has any right to be suspicious of me? I'm a free man. I'll do as I will. No one has any right. I'll do as I will. I am not suspicious of you. I want to help you. I know. I felt that. That's why you're the only person. Listen. There it is. That lobby. He is always saying. Who is he? One of the gardeners. The Count says he's perpetually in love. That's why he's always playing. Is that a love song? Don't you think it sounds like one? How should I know? I must tell you something. That song, it does move me, but I don't like it. Why not? It seems to me almost like an intrusion. There are things that should be left alone. There are dark places that should be left dark. It seems to me Pardon that... me, I... I would not interrupt. Oh, please, Count Antioni. Word has come for me. I'm leaving at sundown today on a journey. I'm going to Sidi Hassan across the desert. Madame, if you'll excuse me. But I haven't yet shown you... Good day, you. Count Antioni. Thank you for having let me see the garden. I must go. Let me show you to the gate, monsieur. Thank you, but I would prefer now. As you wish. Goodbye, Monsieur Androsky. Goodbye. Your friend, I... I don't think he likes me or my garden. Perhaps he has something that's troubling him. I think you're right. If he'd only let other people help him a little, I... No one can help you with something that is really important. Where is Sidi Hassan, where you are going? To get there, one takes the caravan route to the south. My road? Yours? The one I shall travel on one day. If it is the will of Allah. But if one does not believe in Allah? It will still be his will. And now I must go. My companions are waiting for me. Goodbye. And thank you for all your kindness. This garden is yours day and night. May Allah have you in his keeping. And when your summons comes, obey it. And when, if you ever make your long journey on that road, the road to the south, I wish you Allah's blessing in the garden of Allah. I speak with you. My child? Father, do you think it is right to try and avoid what life seems to be bringing, to seek shelter from the storm? Is it not our duty to help others who cannot help themselves? I have known people, my daughter, who seemed almost to think it was their mission to convert the fallen angels. They confuse their powers with the powers that belong to God alone. Yes, but if a friend, someone whom you, for whom you had great sympathy, were possessed by torture, by the devil perhaps, would you not try... Friend. This person of whom you speak, it is Boris Androvsky, is it not? As a friend, I warn you most solemnly not to make friends with this man. Will you give me your reason for this warning? I cannot. I have no reason to give. My reason is my instinct. Do you think he is evil? I don't know if he is evil. I, I don't know what he is. I know that he is not evil. My daughter, you know your own strength best. Only this, I beg of you. I beg you to pause and to think before it is too late. Thank you, Father. I know what you mean. 
And I think I know now what I want. Madame. I've come to tell you. I've made up my mind. I... Yes? Tonight I'm leaving Benny Mora. Tonight? I've come to say goodbye. I think I knew. That I'd be leaving? That it would be like this. That you would come here into this garden one day and bid me goodbye. And that I should feel as I do. I've been standing where you couldn't see me and watching you for a long time. Your face was not happy. You will stay here? I will not stay here. I will make my journey into the desert. Alone? What else can I do? Once you said to me that peace must dwell out there in that desert. It was on the tower the first time we ever spoke to each other. I remember. Why did you speak to me? We came into the desert together. We had to know each other. And now... Now we... We have to say... Dominic, I love you. I love you. But don't listen to me. You mustn't hear it. You mustn't. But I must say it. I can't. I can't go to I say it. I must hear it. Hear it. I love you. I love you. You are listening to the Campbell Playhouse presentation of The Garden of Allah, starring Madeline Carroll and Orson Welles. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Ernest Chappell, ladies and gentlemen, welcoming you back to the Campbell Playhouse. In a moment, we shall resume our presentation of the Garden of Allah. And now Orson Welles continues our Campbell Playhouse presentation of the Garden of Allah, starring Madeline Carroll. Repeat after me. I, Domini, take thee, Boris, for my lawful husband. I, Dominique, take thee, Boris, my lawful husband. From this day forward, to have and to hold. From this day forward, to have and to hold. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. Ego coniungo vos in matrimonium in nomine patris et filiis. I had done what I could. I did not appeal to Dominie again. It was her right to do what she pleased with her heart. And so, on the morning of a day still memorable for one of the worst sandstorms that has ever come to Benny Mora, with a heavy heart, I married them in my little church at the edge of the desert. Boris and Dominie, those two whom the desert had brought together. Even as I spoke the holy words and placed her hand in his, there came over me once again the feeling that here before me was a man with a nameless fear. A man haunted by an agony too great to be born alone. Hey, madame. Have fastened the tent. Now, even if the wind rises again, you are safe. Thank you, Batush. Boris, our tent, yours and mine, our home. Stay here beside me, Domini, by the fire. Oh, Boris, are you happy? For me, there will never be another hour like this. Mm. All my life is tonight. I've had no life yet. But tonight I'm alive. Flesh and blood. Heart and soul. There's nothing here. There can be nothing here to take my life from me now. 
the life of our love tonight. It frightens me to receive so much from you. You make everything I have and am seem small and, and yet great. No one is small who loves. No one is poor. No one is bad who loves. Love burns up evil. Only the beautiful remains. You know what is in my heart, don't you, boy? Do I? All that is in your heart. My heart is full of one thing, quite full. Then I know. And your Mine, too. I have never felt the presence of God in his world as I feel it tonight. Even in the church this morning, he seemed farther away than now. I think I have always known the deeper I would go into the desert, the nearer I should come to God. Why should you think that? Because there is love in the desert. That's why the Arabs call it the Garden of Allah. The desert shall be your garden tonight. There will be nothing in it. Only you and I. You and I. The fire is going out. It's dying. Look how small the circle of flame. How the darkness is creeping up about it. The desert is sending us its darkness. Sending darkness for you and for me. Because of our love. The fire has gone out. It's dark. Tell me, Domine. Tell me that you love the darkness. Madame, it, it is not the master. These are soldiers. All are soldiers. All are, madame. Oh. Yes, monsieur? We have been lost for three days in the great dunes. This morning our water gave out. And just as we were giving up hope, suddenly we saw the light of your fire. Oh, you must rest, gentlemen. My husband will be back soon. He has gone after game. Thank you, madame. These are my soldiers. I am Lieutenant de Travenac. Domini. Are there lights down there by the well? Yes. Tonight we have comrades in the desert. Comrades? Arabs? No, French. An officer and his soldiers who had lost their way in the dunes. He is eating with us. You asked him? Why, why, yes, of course I did. I'm sure that if you'd been here when Monsieur de Trevignac arrived... De Trevignac? You... Yes, the officer. That's his name. What is it, Boris? Nothing. Nothing. I'm afraid my men are lifting their voices very loudly, madame. Oh, let them. It's a long time since we have had strangers with us. They are grateful for being alive. They owe it to you, madame. And you, monsieur. Tell me, monsieur Androwski. Haven't we met before? No. Your face seems familiar to me somehow. I seem to remember... It's impossible that we should have met. We have not met before. <laughs> then I'm mistaken. You are mistaken. You've been here long, then, um, here in the desert? Two months. It is my good fortune. Let me offer you a toast. If you will permit me, I have a flask of liqueur. May I send for it? Of course. Batouche. Yes, monsieur. You will ask the corporal to give you the bottle of Laraguine. That is in my pack. Yes, monsieur. Laraguine? Yes. You uh, know it, perhaps? No, no, I... No. It was, uh, was the finest of our African liqueurs. Was? Unfortunately, yes. There will never be any more, Laraguine. But why? It's a tragic story, madame. This liqueur has been made for 80 years by the Trappist monks of the monastery of El Laraguine in Tunisia. Every summer, from the first grapes, the monks have distilled a small amount of this priceless liqueur. The revenue going to the free hospital in Tunis. The formula was never written. Always it was known to one single monk in the order who, on his deathbed, would deliver the secret to his successor. Well, monsieur, the last keeper of the secret broke his vows. A monk? Yes. Earlier this year, he disappeared. Oh, perhaps he was a very young man. Perhaps the hard life, the rule of silence must have Madame, been... he had been a monk for 20 years. A servant of God for 20 years, and then to... Oh, how terrible. How could a man? What reason? He may have had a very good reason. There could be no reason for a man to desert his God. Here it is, monsieur, the flask you sent me for. Thank you. A glass, madame? Thank you. If, if you don't mind, will you excuse me? I should go down and see if your men need anything. You are very kind, madame. Your glass? 
Let it go. Don't be long, Dominique. I won't, my dear. Let it go. Where is he, Lieutenant de Trevignac? The liqueur. The bottle has been smashed. What is it, boys? What happened? Nothing happened. Nothing. Dominique. Dominique, do you really care whether that officer is here or gone? Do you want anyone to be with us to break in on our lives? Aren't we happy alone? Dominic, have you perfect trust in me? I have given my life to you. What more can I give? I have nothing but you, Dominic. Nothing. Before you, there was nothing. If I were ever without you again... You are troubled, Boris. There is something between there us. There is nothing between us. You have all my love. I had hoped by becoming one, you and I, we could bear your burden of misery together. Give me your sorrow, Boris. I, I, I cannot. I can give you everything I have. More than I have. But I cannot give you that. There can be no happiness for us. Unless I know your misery. Unless I bear its burden with you. Tell me what it is, Boris. You must let me alone for a while to think, Dominic. Perhaps if you pray. Pray. I'll try. I'll try to pray alone. In the night. In the desert. I'll try to pray. <laughs> I have returned to you, Dominic. I have waited for you all night. I have prayed all night for you. I was on my knees, alone in the desert. I tried to make my confession to it, as if it were a priest. But I, I couldn't. I could only make it to you, Dominic. Only to you. Do you hear, Dominic? Tell me. Whatever it is, I will understand, because I love Dominic, you. Dominic, you want to know what it is that makes me unhappy? Even in our love, desperately unhappy, it is this. I believe in God. I love God. And I have insulted him. I've tried to forget him. To put human love, the love of you, Domine, higher than my love for him. But always I'm haunted by the thought of him. And from that thought has come my despair. Once, when I was young, I gave myself to God solemnly. I've broken the vows I made. I... I... You gave yourself to God? How? I... I gave myself to God as a monk. You were right. You were right. You've had my love, not my truth. Now, take my truth. I've kept it from you. Now you shall have it, Domine. Hate me tonight, but in your hatred believe that I never loved you as I love you now. Give me your truth. Even as a child, Domine. Even as a child, I was devout. It seemed to me that there could be nothing more glorious than that I should give up the world. At the earliest moment that I could, I went into the monastery. I was at peace there. Dominic, I was happy. Happy? It was a lonely sort of happiness, but it was happiness. When it came time to take the eternal vows, I did not hesitate. When even now and then some of the novices went out again into the world, I simply wondered that they could be so blind about their own happiness. I worked in the fields and the garden. I lived in the sun and the rain close to the earth day after day. And at night, there was the long, plain chapel where I prayed, where God seemed very near. There was nothing to mar my peace. I lived in his love, simply, happily. Go on, Barney. When the old abbey died, and the new abbey put me in charge of the little house where visitors are received, they absolved me from my vow of silence. Then for the first time in years, 
I saw other people, talked to other people for the first time since I was a child. I listened to the voices of men and women. One summer, we sheltered a man who was tortured by his love for a woman. He talked to me of her day after day, of the beauty of his agony, trying to free himself from his torture, but only, only robbing me of my own quiet. And then one day, the woman came to the monastery, unable longer to enjoy her own torture, seeking him out. I saw them rush into each other's arms. Their faces were the faces of angels. At night, alone in my cell, I was unable not to think of what I had seen, the pain, the misery, the torture of love. And all of them together, the ecstasy of love. All the things that were denied to me forever, every man, every woman, obsessed me. What was their life? What did they feel? I would look out of the monastery walls toward the lights of the city and think, they are living there, those people, living. For weeks, for months, I fought with my obsession. Then, at last, one night, I fled the monastery. Now I've given you my truth, Dominic. Now you know all there is to know. God help me. Now you can pray, Boris. Pray? Yes. I will pray with you. Our Father who art. Pray with me, Boris. Our Father. Our Father. Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. done. On On earth. for days, Dominic. You must tell me where we're going. Not yet. Dominic. Don't take your heart away from me entirely. Dominic, don't do that. Do you know that since... since I spoke, since I told you, you've never come near to me? Never touched my hand. Never. I know. And yet I have never loved you, Boris, as I do now. Now I will tell you where we are going. We are going back to Benny Moore. You must attain your peace. Not with me, but with God. Dominique, take me where you will. If it is to Benny Moore, I will go. Afterwards. Afterwards? We cannot think of afterwards, Boris. God knows what is in your heart and in mine. Perhaps in our hearts already he has put a secret knowledge of the end. The end? Yes, the end. Shall I drive to, monsieur? Tell him, Dominique. To, to Allah again. To the monastery, madame? Yes, to the monastery. Where will you be, Dominique? When I'm gone? I don't know. I can't think of that now in, in these last few minutes. If I could feel that I could... I could sometimes see you, even far away, like those lights down there. But never, never to see you again, as long as I live. We will see each other every day in our prayers. 
Domini. Till the end of my life, I will think of you. Every day. Every hour. No, Boris, don't tell me, don't. Domini, don't shrink from this. This is the truth. The truth of my soul. And you love the truth. Domini, I cannot regret that we have loved each other. That we will love each other forever. I cannot even wish to regret it. Always I knew that I was sinning against God and you, against myself, my eternal vows. But I see it now. Before I knew you, Domini, I never really knew God. Now I... I know him. In the worst moments of the agony that is to come, I shall always have that hope. I shall always feel that I... I know what God is. Because of you. I know. I, too. Wherever I go, that will be the glory of our happiness, Boris. We will learn to say to ourselves, we are unconquered. We are unconquerable. Here we are, Monsieur Le Dan. Ben Larragin. This is the monastery. Stop here, driver. But, Monsieur, it is not allowed. The visitor's entrance is over... Stop here. Oui, Monsieur. Domini. Go, Boris. Quickly. Let me touch your hand. Once again. My darling. Domini. Goodbye. Goodbye, my love. Drive back to Tunis. Madame does not wish to wait. Monsieur, drive back to Tunis. We do not count time in the desert as does the world elsewhere. And so, in all truth, I could not say now how many years it has been since Domini came back to us here at Benimora, where she and Boris first met. I know that she is a gentle and gracious lady, and that I spend my afternoons sitting quietly with her in the garden on the edge of the desert, while her child and his, the child that Boris can never know, plays happily at our feet. I know that her eyes are turned almost always in the direction of that hill where many, many miles away across the Tunisian desert lies the Trappist monastery of El Aragin, to which Boris returned. And I know because I see her so often, because I hear every now and then from the abbot of the monastery, that the two of them, Boris and Domini, have found their happiness, firm and enduring, in that to which in the end, all men must return. The greatest love, which is the love of God. Amen. This concludes our Campbell Playhouse presentation of the Garden of Allah. 
In just a moment, Orson Welles will return to the microphone with tonight's Playhouse guest, Madeline Carroll. And now, here is Orson Welles. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present to you now our guest of the evening, Miss Madeline Carroll. Thank you, Orson. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Madeline, I can't tell you how glad we are to have you with us again tonight. Ever since you did the Green Goddess last spring, we've been hoping to have you back. <laughs> back is right. I've been in jungles ever since last spring. Jungles? Paramount jungles. First I was in the Balinese jungle. In Honeymoon in Bali. Yes, you were wonderful. <laughs> and now I'm acting my way through the African jungle in Safari. You have no idea how happy I was with you just now in that nice, clean desert. <laughs> Besides, I've never been in the jungle in my life, and as a matter of fact, I have been in the Sahara Desert. Well, so have I. What a pity we never met, you and I on the great road to the south, our <laughs> desert caravan under the moonlight. Did you ever ride one? I beg your pardon? A camel. Indeed, I did. It's still a matter of lively comment among the natives. <laughs> <laughs> did you? <laughs> That's not a matter I care to discuss, Orson. However, what I will discuss gladly is how very much I've enjoyed both the times that I've been here with you and on the Campbell Playhouse. There's a very special quality about these shows of yours that makes it a real pleasure to act on them. Well, thank you, Madeline. And next time you'll emerge from one of your jungles, you'll please let us hear from you, won't you? <laughs> I certainly will. Meantime, shall I give your regards to Dr. Livingston? <laughs> Good night, Orson. Good night, and thank you, Madeline Carroll. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight in our Campbell Playhouse production of The Garden of Allah, Madeline Carroll played Dominie and Selden. Everett Sloan played the Count George Coulouris with Father Rubier, and Ray Collins was heard as Lieutenant de Trevignac. Boris was probably identifiable, and the music, as always, was arranged and conducted by Bernard Herman. And next Sunday. Next Sunday, we bring you Dodsworth, which bears the unique distinction of having been written by a great American novelist and made into a play by a great American playwright. The work of Sinclair Lewis, the first American winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature, it was dramatized by the late Sidney Howard, twice winner of the Pulitzer Prize for Drama. First as a book, then as a play, and finally as a motion picture, this story of a successful American and his wife and their trip abroad, and what happened to them has never failed to move American audiences. As our guests, we're very proud to have with us the two ladies who in the original New York production created the parts of Edith Courtright and Fran Dodsworth. Miss Nan Sunderland, whom you've heard with us before on The Magnificent Ambersons, and that well-known American actress of the stage and motion pictures, Miss Faye Bainter. And so until then, and all of us here in the Campbell Playhouse remain obediently yours. <laughs> We bring you that great American story, Dodsworth, with Faye Bainter and Nan Sunderland as our guests. This is Ernest Chappell saying thank you and good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.